Well, Kyle. Yes, Garrett. I'm scared. You're scared. People have a lot of very strong opinions about Shadowbringers, and we're going to sit here and try and talk about things that are, are good and less good. Oh, it's an objectified list. It's our opinions. Nothing will go wrong. I don't believe you. Fair. We love dungeons. We really like dungeons. We like dungeons a lot. We liked dungeons before we started playing Final Fantasy XIV. And then when we got into Final Fantasy XIV, we found out that Final Fantasy XIV has some really good dungeons. We used to break it up into MSQ dungeons and quote unquote optional dungeons, which just means you, don't, you can complete the MSQ without completing those dungeons. However, we're changing things up in Shadowbringers because there aren't nearly as many optional dungeons or hard dungeons. No. There are no hard dungeons. They're not doing hard modes anymore. Oh, I'm so sad about that. But it also means they took the dungeon effort and put it in the MSQ so you get a dungeon per patch. So it's kind of nice. I'm sure I'm judging by my own cues. I'm sure a lot of people don't get optional dungeons. A lot of people don't go unlock the hards. Well, so it, probably a better use of resources, but still, you know, a little sad. A little sad. Uh... It's not if it goes into solo duties. It's actually a worse use of resources. So this is our Wall of Dungeons for Shadowbringers 5.0 Dungeons. We're going to cover every single dungeon that was in 5.0. And that includes the two non-MSQ required dungeons. Yes, we're going to talk about that primal song. Using our infallible system of music, vibes, and bosses. Let's go. Omens to Switch is up first. And uh, we've already done a standalone video about this because we like this dungeon so much. So where would you like to start the bidding, Kyle? Well, to be fair, we ignore the MSQ slash story impact thing. So I'm curious where this is going to end up today. Because as a story vessel, Omens to Switch was amazing. Had great pacing, great energy, theming. It was a Disney ride. And I really liked it. But in terms of music, vibes, bosses maybe it struggles the music is fine it's plain it, it's it's inoffensive but it's also not particularly <laughs> interesting inoffensive yes that, that's a good it's yeah. video game music it's adventurous it's fine it's yeah uh, i i will say i like it a little more the more i've heard it like every time i hear it i'm like this isn't as bad as i remember so i i i i lean towards the positive on the music i think it's again still pretty middle of the road uh the vibes are fantastic still. I've gotten this, we have both gotten basically every dungeon we're about to talk to with the exception of the two at the end, a bunch of times, because we did a lot of leveling in Shadowbringers. So of all of the wall of dungeons, this is gonna be the one where we've had the most replays of all of the dungeons we're gonna talk about, because we had to level a lot, because we wanted to do roll quests, and we hadn't been keeping up with side jobs uh, up until Shadowbringers. And I still like it. I still really like Holminster Switch. I stand by a lot of my praise in our standalone Holminster Switch video. The music is fine. The vibes are great. And I think the bosses absolutely hold up, especially the final boss. I don't care how many times I run it. The final boss is a really fun dance. And I love just the kind of the weight of all of Philia's, Philia's attacks. I mean, all the bosses here are really solid. Fun little dance, not pushing you too hard. It's the start of the expansion, getting you onboarded. But you get to see some new attacks, like Tesseline's little numbered charge, I thought was really well done. And we've seen that reused one or once or twice now as we get later in the game. But as far as the visual journey, it's not as distinct as something like Don Meg, obviously, or some of our previous dungeons. Visually distinct? I like the, the transition, like going from colorful world to changing palettes, changing color tones. Well, I mean, Don Meg just looks like you threw a box of crayons at the screen. But we do go from a forest to the burning village and up the hill, and there's thematic peoples running around and yep. dead bodies everywhere, yep. and I, I, I like it. I'll say in terms of the transitions, the final third is the most tame. Uh, the, yes. The, the opening forest, awesome. Still one of my favorite starting areas in a dungeon and then the transition out into the farmland seeing the fire in the distance i love it i absolutely love it the, f the final bit you're just kind of going up a hill there's some shrubbery the final boss pit is actually extremely tame but it is the first light warden so at least your first time through you're kind of just like what is this crazy monster and it's still a good boss fight so i'm, I'm with you it's a good point the, the final third 
isn't all that visually interesting in my opinion. It's such an interesting dungeon though, because outside of the story ramifications, it does something that I feel like Final Fantasy XIV is missing a lot of the time, which is a sense of scale. Because we can teleport everywhere we go, because the maps don't actually interconnect in a perfect way, that is one seamless sort of transition across the zones, the world can feel a little small at times. And Holminster Switch took that forest, that village, and really blew it up. Really made it feel like this is a place people live in. Filled out the world. And I really, really like it for that. So where would you like to start the bidding? Obviously, it's grindable. It is, as you mentioned, completely inoffensive. I'm more than happy to get it. It's a straight shot, easy go. I, I'm thinking bottom of banger, above grindable. It releases the good brain juices when I get this <laughs> in a queue. Yeah, yeah. Feels all right. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's, you know. let's just start it in banger, and, and we don't need to worry about position for right now. It just goes in banger. All right. Well, let's move over to Could Be Cooler with Don Meg. Wow, leading, leading the way <laughs> with an opinion. This is like, this is very much like, um, like I don't like pickles. Uh, I just don't like the taste. And it's kind of hard to have a, have a discussion about it because just, I just don't like the taste. But some people do like pickles. Um, yeah, the whole, you haven't had a good pickle kind of thing always crops up on th you. That is not a thing. That is not, a th all pickles uh, taste the same. Um, and they're all overwhelming. It is very loud. I also think it is weirdly plain while at the same time being extremely it's a little windows wallpaper fantasy like it's very flat and low even though it's rolling hills but it's just kind of grass and a skybox with a few adornments that kind of look like i designed it in animal crossing yeah it, it's it's so weird right because it is highly fantastical but the linear dungeon of the modern design means there's not really anything to see. The transition's beautiful when it switches over and yeah. changes palettes. That's awesome. I hate the Lord of the Lingering Gates. That water effect on the ground is always a different, I know it's probably standardized, but it's always a different size. It always tricks me. I just end up doing flips the entire fight. The, I hate him. The, it's the only boss fight in here I actually like. I like the water spouts because I feel smart when I uh, run to the one that just exploded to be safe. Like. I, when I'm in the groove of the Lord of the Lingering Gaze, I feel good. Random Magic the Gathering green creatures, fine. I couldn't even remember what the second boss of this dungeon was. Got like lasers that empowered it and made it bigger. That was basically the game. Now the Lord of the Langsome Gate has a really cute mechanic with the balance beam. No, it doesn't. I said cute. Do you know Maybe what the word enjoyable. cute means? I think it's fine, but... It's not exactly fun on multiple goes. And this is the one of all the Shadowbringers dungeons that I have randomly queued into the most. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. I would put this in grindable, but it's lame. Could this be is, cooler. This is that house in your neighborhood that makes you realize you suddenly have opinions about what color your neighbors paint their homes. Oh yeah, so <laughs> you want a dungeon owner's association just because of this? This entire dungeon is garish. The middle, the middle forest part, I do rather enjoy. I think it's quite pretty. But the beginning, and especially the end, that 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 castle at the end is is just garish. Like it's just like it's just in your face. It's, everything's a little too bright and glowy. I would have liked them to do more with the castle. I wanted maybe some water lifts. We see a lot of cute things done with water in our alliance raids. Whether it's evil I, I mean, or hell, mere. Just, even just 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 hanging out in the golden saucer, you just you, I want to go upstairs real quick. You jump up on yeah. water. Yeah, like, yeah, some water spouts. Yeah. So maybe we extend the bridges. I'm sure they've moved away from keys and unlocking things and extending the bridges ourselves because that's all delay mechanics in that regard. But it needed a little something to just make that castle feel dangerous. Do you think they knew what was coming down the pipeline with a, a certain Bismarck themed dungeon, and they were like, "We can't make this the, the cool water dungeon." We, we just can't maybe, do it. yeah, and we could. And later they were planning a full castle dungeon, so maybe this was kind of a the leftovers. You you do need room <laughs> for escalation, like you know, the game has to feel better as it goes. So sometimes I'm sure there are cuts in order to ensure the later parts of the game feel more epic. We're being really hard on this dungeon because we need a poster child of 
Shadowbringer's dungeons being somewhat bad. There has to be something wrong with them. Otherwise, the tier list doesn't work. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just flattering the game. Bunch of fanboys. Bunch of Andes. So are you going to fight me, or are we just putting this in could be cooler? Oh, no, yeah. I, I'll put it at the top of could be cooler. So that it's it's in that kind of grind. I'm not offended. I'd rather get this than a Realm Reborn dungeon nowadays. Uh, I'd rather run Keeper of the Lake. Oh, Keeper of the Lake's good. Yeah, Keeper of the Lake's really good. I'd rather run Keeper oh, you, of the you Lake. did that on purpose. You know I love Keeper I'd, of the well, Lake. I do too. You, just because you like something doesn't mean I can't like it. It's kind of the entire thing of this channel. We both that's, like that's a true. thing and decided we wanted to, you know, talk about that thing together. And true. stream that thing together. All right. Oh, that'd be a great place for uh, for a promo a promo if you want to do it, where we stream that thing together. You could, you know. But if you'd like to watch us stream things together, oh, you're you're just baiting fan art. Subscribe to the channel right here. We stream. You're already here. Hit the subscribe button. We stream every Tuesday and Thursday. Sometimes we have surprise Friday streams. We stream twice on Thursdays. Join us for the podcast and join us for our big event evening streams right here on the Grinding Gear YouTube channel. Nice. All right, it's time to talk about the Katana Ravel. Ravelry. I've gotten this dungeon a ton. Yeah. And I up. still like it, which means for me, at least mentally, it's starting in the grindable category and we'll see how high it can fly. As far as the vibes are concerned, Kyle, it's ruins. It's just, it's ruins throughout. I love ruins. I, do I love too. overgrown ruins. I Lack of candles, honestly. My favorite thing about ruins Ooh. is often candles. Don't care how they got lit. Don't care how long the wax lasts. Do not care. Candles everywhere. Do You're it. a torch fan, and when it comes to ruins, yeah, you like torch. Yeah, but still, no questions asked, right? Just yeah. lighting sources. Don't bother me. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Fine. Doesn't matter. Candles to me is more of an old old church thing. Mm, yeah. Or like a catacomb, whereas a ruin is is torches. That's a place for torches, yo. Sure. Or, or crystals. Braziers. Ah, yes, a nice brazier. Brazier fan. And there's plenty of those in Katana Ravel. Um, th this, to me, like this dungeon, even going back to the very first time I ran it, felt a little special right out the get-go with those singular piece, like the pieces of trash makes them sound like I don't like them. But the trash mobs, right when you get going, you have to fight one at a time, and they do, they do the wall attacks that you got to hide behind the chest high gears of war walls to not get hit by. And it just, it it's still unique, even having run it this many times. I'm, like, those opening salvos of those singular mobs makes this dungeon stand out to me. I agree. It's such a great little mini game. They're really fun to fight. It gets you moving in a non-traditional way in a dungeon. You get two tries to, because you get to do it a second time, so you get to kind of warm up, which is nice. And the music. Like, I just really like this kind of lahi light version like, they have oh, going Lonnie, on that's a good way to put it yeah um it, it, it sounds i describe it as like weirdly chill it almost sounds like it should be town music like i should like i should be like buying and selling or i for me i always go back to his ocarina of time kakariko village <laughs> just what i think of as town music like video it has game a shot ass vibe. town music yeah, yeah it's just it like it has a shot vibe you expect the shopkeeper to kind of be bouncing with the yep. tune a little bit yep. totally yeah i feel like i should be chilling while while listening to this music but instead i'm going on an adventure and i'm going to fight a giant bat in a room full of lore oh, the, the bat has a nice arrival the bat's fun does the pillar thing from Evilise or the golden saucer if you're more familiar with that i like all the bosses in here the zottle if like still throws me for a loop the first boss in here like it doesn't matter how many times i run this thing i'm like wait how do i pizza how do i say wh where's the safe pizza slice i forget how to safety pizza like every time every time i do this pause i'm like oh, right i have to think about this uh but it's a it's a fun mechanic it's a good dance bat squatch uh on top of being probably the best name of any boss we've ever fought <laughs> Uh, has fun Sounds mechanics. like you're lying about the boss name. Right? Doesn't it sound like I'm making it up? <laughs> Doesn't it? Um, and then Light Warden Eros. Like, I, I, oh, it's, Eros is fun. Cerberus is hell. Uh, drops the poison puddles and does the breathe in before the push out. You gotta like look behind you because you're like, am I gonna clear all of the poison puddles? I, just, I have a good time. And this goes back to vibes a bit, but it's really good visual escalation as you move through. Mm, yeah, yeah, when you emerge there at the waterfall out of the cave and get to see the expanding ruins, it is very satisfying. And just a beautiful cave. What a beautiful cave. 
However, we'll say if I'm really thinking about it, all of it's like pretty understated. None of, none of it's a jaw drop. It's a comfortable blanket. Yeah, no, this, this is uh, your favorite old cartoon, a documentary in the evening. It is, mm-hmm. it is not meant to blow your socks off, to jazz you up, but you will enter and leave satisfied. And I want to go top a banger in that way. Top I don't banger. think it's epic in the epic sense, knowing what's to come, but it I... is super solid. I'm trying to think, because I went into this thinking there's no way it beats out Holman's or Switch. I think the music's better. I think the bosses are more fun. The music is and better. I, and the visual journey of the dungeon is just more diverse and interesting. It's more diverse. I think the visual highs of Holminster are better than the visual highs of Katana. Damn. I well, th- 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 Here's the problem. I really, I really like Katana Ravel, so I don't really want to fight you on this. But in my head, Holminster was above it. And I'm just kind of mm. arguing with myself right now. I, w- I was thinking Katana Ravel was like tip top of grindable we have to use our system our reliable infallible system which had the better music katana ravel who had the better bosses katana ravel and who had the better theme i'm gonna give it the whole minster i agree but that's two out of three all right and shit it's katana wins. wins katana ravel all right. wins above whole minster damn damn you convinced me of something i already like <laughs> <laughs> To Malik as well. Not unenjoyable by any means, but what a strange dungeon. Yeah, I really like the music. It's, but with how much hype you go into, like if you if you play this game publicly, if you play Final Fantasy XIV publicly, you're going to consume so many takes. Just by osmosis, even if you're not like obsessively reading comments, you're just you're just gonna get a feeling, a vibration. Going into Shadowbringers, I'm like, this must be the darkest, most effed up thing on earth and and in ways it is it is is, there there is a lot of like legitimate emotional lows you know it's still final fantasy 14 there's still a lot of hope a lot of friendship and when it comes to the music there's a lot of like uplifting major key motifs deep down the track for malik as well is not one of these it is dark it is creepy it is ethereal it's haunted mining is the best way I can describe it. And of course, now that we've made it through the game, it makes sense that there's a big mine business. We spent all that time on the trolleys. It's the reveal of Reen's power to see the Light Wardens and going underground and questing to that Light Warden is really, really cool. But I did not expect in the least that we'd be hitting up a big mine. It has a good visual journey. I think the vibes going from ruins to corrupted crystal ruins really works. And in that way, we make our way through bosses that also augment this idea. We have the greater armadillo, strange, uh, beating up the local fauna. I mean, it was, but trying, a cool to, boss it was trying to eat us, right? Or kill us or something yeah. like maim us. It was fun. And then we fight Mr. Bucket. <laughs> Mr. Bucket's a really fun dance. As bizarre and wacky and reused of an asset he is, uh, they embraced it. Like it, it just embraces the fun. Why not? They, they were just like, I have to imagine someone was like, this is too funny. I, I have to do it. And everyone else was like, we agree. It's hilarious. Ship it. Yep. All that wackiness and exploration comes to a head as we make our way into the crystal ruins. We start seeing the corrupted ether and light wardens inside. And Storge was such a surprise of a model. And I love the fight. It's a great dance with all the little triangles. And yeah, it is. Dodging it's, the things. It's a really good dance. It's a really good model. If you're a fan of biblically accurate angel memes, then storage is your shit. The only thing I, I think I uh, I don't agree with you on it. I, th- I think visually it's a little samey throughout. There are subtle changes as we go through the dungeon, but it kind of just, just kind of feels like I'm in a mine the whole time. But it's better than Copper Belt, but that's also not really a compliment. It's not really, yeah. <laughs> it's not hard to be better than Copper Belt. Yeah, there's a reason why the Wall of Dungeons are per expansion, because our list would be dinosauric if we were to put them all on one page. And Copper Belt would be way, way down there. I do want to do it, though. Hey, it would be fun. I just, just, just like vomit all of them onto the board and just be like, okay, okay man, we got to make sense of this. Do the universe thing like you did in science class when you were in middle school where the one kid had to be Pluto and had to go all the way out across the football field? It's grindable, surely. 
Uh, yes, I think that to me this is the the quintessential grindable Shadowbringers dungeon. Poster child of grindable. Let's do it. I'm not bad. I'm not mad to get it. It doesn't necessarily release happy brain juices, but it also doesn't release angry brain juices. Well, let's climb that mountain then, shall we? Although if it's Mount, it's usually a volcano. And it is a volcano in other Final Fantasy games, so you know, maybe it's dormant. Mount Gold. A flying volcano that somehow, even though it's dormant, doesn't have magma when it's ripped out of the ground. We do like magma around here. Yo, go check our other walls. <laughs> Lava, magma, it gets a lot of upvotes from us. This did not have that, so it's already struggling. The music itself is extremely adventurous. It is... Go, 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 heroes, up the mountain, scale your way. Which, in the moment of Shadowbringers doing the MSQ, was kind of exhausting because the entirety of the up the lift area was nonstop, on repeat, epic go, go, go music. And this just kind of melded into it. Now that I've removed myself from that, I do like the song. It's fine. It services the heroic journey. It's grown on me quite a bit now that I've seen this dungeon multiple times and I've also listened to this music multiple times if you're particularly keen of ear yeah you may have noticed that I pulled it into other Shadowbringers videos just because it fit really well it's good heroic music uh it's it's very heroic it's very sweeping it's kind of how I would describe it a lot of string mm. going on it, again didn't grow up with Final Fantasy but there was enough of it in my life because of osmosis I had a lot of Final Fantasy f friends and um, this is kind of like, for me, what I think of as quintessential Final Fantasy music. Yeah, like, like, this is this is the video of the crystals and some tech you don't understand flying by in a Final Fantasy VII sort of trailer yeah. that you see at GameStop. The vibes, it's epic. We did a whole video on this too. It is a Disney ride. You go on a journey location to location. The Talos in the background is doing cool God of War stuff. The enemies are flying in and joining the battle. Our forgiven obscenity is showing up and doing ground effects. The whole thing is just deeply thematic. Once that white ether marble shows up, like this dungeon just like puts itself over the top of, of extremely, extremely memorable. It's just a dungeon I like moving through. My biggest critique of this dungeon, the thing I think that holds Mount Gog back a little bit is I think Forgiven Whimsy is the only boss that stands out mechanically to me. Oh, I thought you were going to diss on the rocks again because those Final Fantasy rocks can be a bit rough. They are extremely samey uh, and the way that they do the lighting engine in this game makes rocks kind of just like blend together visually. Yeah, Forgiven Whimsy really does stand out. I think Forgiven Cruelty has some cool mechanics. It's fun to see the cutscene boss battling in the room and doing the ground lasers. I love ground lasers, so it gets some points for that. Whimsy is where it really shows off some cool mechanics. What an amazing boss design being that visually interactive with its abilities. It definitely overshadows a Forgiven Obscenity. Yeah, yeah. Forgiven Obscenity, it's very visually impressive. Uh, it's a good set piece. I mean, both Whimsy and Obscenity, like you're fighting in these really visually interesting places, right? Like Whimsy's right before a gate and Obscenity is right before the ridiculous staircase up to Vothry. Like mechanically, in terms of like actually doing the fight, like I think Whimsy's the coolest fight in this dungeon. I agree. I do like the climb past the statues through the kind of Athenan garden area leading up to Forgiven Obscenity and the buff that the boss is putting out. It's not by any means close to mythic World of Warcraft buffs or anything like that, but it does give me that slight vibe, so it kind of tickles my nostalgia. Where are you starting things? Where's the bidden beginning? You know, had I stopped playing here, this would have been an easy epic. Yes. This would have been easy, easy epic. I really do like this dungeon quite a bit, but I'm thinking top of banger. I think that's a safe place for it. Maybe with the passage of time and reviewing the other MSQs, we bump it up a little bit. But I think Top of Banger is an excellent place for Mount Gold to begin. And then there was Amara. Kyle, if you'd like to just put this in Epic, we can move on. 
Okay, cool. Yep. Let's just let's just let's Sick. just let's just yep, yep, yep. yep. It's done. I mean, what are you gonna do? Like they they made sad heroic music. The track is awesome. It encompasses the journey that you've been on, the oh, journey I, you're going to. I love the beginning of uh, what is it called? M mortal instance. I keep thinking it's yeah. mortal instruments, but it's mortal instance. And if you type it in wrong to Spotify, which I did, I tested this. You still get the right track. I love the beginning of it. It's su it's super bassy. I think it's like it's I think it's just uh, upright basses and cellos just like going nuts. The dungeon is dangerous without being unforgiving. Like there's enough fireballs that you get the gist of it without it having to be burdensome. The first beast is an amazing model and such a cool climactic fight for your first boss as the walls come down and everything's exploding. The eh, second boss bellwether is weird and an ad fight, so yeah. Birdman! I am the Birdman. Yeah, bird, bird chicken dude. Yeah, first, it is first beast weird. Is, is creepy in spite of the fact that it makes me think of the dumb looking Freddy Krueger caterpillar, and yet it's still scary looking. Yeah, Birdman's a little strange. We we went into pretty deep detail of how weird we think Birdman is in our standalone Amarat video. And then we get to Thonic Riddle Therion. I love him. I had to open a dictionary again, Kyle. Yeah? What's it mean? I realized that I never went and looked up what Thonic means. It means concerning, belonging to, or inhabiting the underworld. Oh, well, that makes perfect sense. I'm so excited to see them run with this idea more. I want to see more bosses done in this style. Yes. One of my favorite boss models. Full stop. Going out on the side platforms, dodging the lasers. Faces are showing up all the time. You're fighting in space. They're, they're two. I'm showing my hand here. Well, we already threw an epic. Yeah, uh, yeah. There is not a dungeon that we've hit to this day in this game that has had a, a higher high of an ending. Yeah. You go to freaking space Bang. and you right watch meteors just crashing down. This is a, a 10 out of 10 out of 10, a 20 out of 10 dungeon. This is a 20 out of 10 dungeon. It, it's essentially perfect. We've talked many times about dungeons that yell at you, have too many voiceovers. That's not the case with Emmett. It's just, it simply doesn't exist. It's not an issue. It's simply not an issue. Listen to the man talk, not an issue. I would listen to that man read me my car manual. What more is there to say about Amarat, dude? Perfect. It's a perfect dungeon. Let's get rockin'. It's time to move into dungeons that weren't required for MSQ, and that means we're starting with the twinning. So the music is just, it's best track so far. And then when you get to the tycoon, you get Locus, which is the Alexander theme, but the Primal's version of Locus. Sure. Because the original track of Locus is the Soken piece. They're just showing off, really. Because this whole dungeon is just a big show off. <laughs> <laughs> I have gone on a journey with this dungeon. There was so much hype for this ahead of time that I was expecting, like, the ghost of Emmett to show up. I've had to cool my jets and find my own love for this dungeon. But I think I have. Where'd you find it? Just with t the passage of time and getting the the, the 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 hype, the community hype behind me. But I was you know I was going through it and like, damn it, this dungeon does stand on its own. I wasn't super high on it because there was so much hype and I was like, whatever is about to happen in this dungeon is gonna like be mind blowing. And we were just coming off of the end of 5.0. I had just been really really impressed by the story that the, at least the the first part of Shadowbringers had to tell me. And I, and I like legitimately, like I've, I've considered making a story or a video on this channel that the headline would have been the most overhyped part of Final Fantasy XIV. And it was gonna be about the twinning. Cause I was like, ooh, that'd be spicy and that get some views. <laughs> uh, when really what the conversation was gonna be was like the, the danger of pre-hype. Now that I've let that all pass and put it behind me, and I went and looked at this through the lens of the way we look through all dungeons when we do a wall of dungeons, dude, the twinning is fucking awesome. It's pretty cool. It is a visual feast. The music is the best track we're going to talk about today. Uh, and the tycoon might be my favorite boss fight we're going to talk about today. I love the journey of this dungeon. I mean, how many times have we run Crystal Tower? We've been there. 
And you go in, you go up the stairs, you start the thing versus the many headed wolf lady thing. And that's that. It was really, really cool to have that broken down wall to explore an area of the Crystal Tower you've never seen before. That really tickled me. And I thought the the bosses in general were pretty neat. They're very kind of allegany and blobbish in that way. But Alpha Zanghal, Zangnal? Zagnal? He had a cute mechanic with the sort of cages where you would try not to break them. We broke them. It wasn't a huge we, deal, we but broke, you know, like, avoid all the, ads. the cages you could break. Yeah. Yeah. But it was still a don't don't add the ads kind of fight. And I enjoy those. Don't add the ad. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I know you like that quite a bit. And I thought it was pretty cute. And it was a good graphic of the the glass spheres shattering and letting the contents out. Uh, Mithridates is just one of the cooler models I've seen in game. This is a Final Fantasy model. 100%. Like you said with the music earlier, this is what I think of when I think of Final Fantasy bosses. Oh, really? Me, not me at all. Just some techno weird one-eyed thing. Oh, you see, I think of like, I think of overly elaborate summons that look vaguely, vaguely godlike. We start to explore where the Ironworks was experimenting and building inside the Crystal Tower. I enjoyed those sort of nods. That's where my overhype was, as everyone in the audience was yelling, look at that, Kyle, you're missing it. And I mean, well, it's right there. Like, I see it. Really, I mean, I think the most graphically awesome thing in the whole dungeon was the weird green mist that, like, warped your body image after shot thing. Oh, God, yeah, that was that was wild. Yeah, that, that really that really tripped me out. I mean, I don't know. That final boss arena, I think, is awesome looking. With the images of the sort of past moments that you've been on, combining Omega and Alexander to make this time machine boss. It was very cool. It is a great looking model. It's a great fight mechanically. You've already talked about how you like the de delayed lasers or I do. as we've coined de lasers. Yeah. The tycoon has the best de lasers we've seen. It does. Uh, yeah, it's true. They, they do the time theming well without making it burdensome. And that's hard to do. I do think it's epic. I I was gonna say I I put this firmly underneath Amara, like, and it's and it it was a journey for me to get there. Going back to it, I really respect it as a dungeon uh, uh, that stands on its own. Agreed, agreed. The the lore ramifications and reveals inside were unnecessary, but the dungeon itself. <laughs> is awesome. It's fine inside. I think you don't like the end quest. And this, we, we're just gonna have a conversation that says no bearing on our rating because we don't take into account lore or story for ranking a dungeon. Just how fun is the dungeon to do? If you had to go do the dungeon again, would you would you be happy about it? Um, the end is, is very telly, not show. But they just showed us. The dungeon itself shows you. And I think it does a pretty good job. You literally get to the end, you fight an Alexander that looks like it was made by the Ironworks because it was. It's an Alexander that was made by the friggin' Ironworks. And like, Ironworks aren't my favorite part of Final Fantasy XIV lore. I like Sid a lot, but um, I don't, I'm, I'm not super into Final Fantasy XIV tech. It's not an aesthetic I'm super into, but like they, damn, they really, they really pushed it here. They really yeah. went for it. And I think they absolutely stuck the landing. I, I'm hopeful. I'm gonna put it where you suggested, but I would love to be wowed. I would love to see something sneak in right below Amarok there. Academia a nighter. Academia a nighter. A nighter. A nighter. It's like you got a buddy who's named Nighter. This, I, I think, this is my darling dungeon of the day, sir. It would feel like padding if they put in the MSQ, but it also kind of like, it kind of like slots right in. Like I, I know like totally, if you got to Amra and you're like, hey, let's run this academia, it, it would be a delay, but it's just so well made. It's got really cute bosses. It explores another part of the city. It really kind of fills up much like Homemaster Switch. You know, MMO zones are kind of small. You know, where do people live in Ogremar? It doesn't matter, you know, we don't include that kind of thing. And this just fills out the buildings. It, 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 it takes your mind's eye, your imagination and says, wow, all these buildings are full of things. This whole place is a living, breathing world. I love the song. I love the old timey Bioshock radio business that it does. Oh yeah, at the very beginning where it, they literally just got samples of tuning a radio. Yeah. 
and we get to explore a, basically a wizard's library. I love that. So I love all of our wizard's libraries we've done in all. Can we do wall of wizard libraries? Because we have enough. Uh, sure, but I bet you there'll be one in Endwalker. But we won't need to do a wall of the most jawsome bosses because it's here. That was a really cool boss battle. Yeah. Little sharks swimming around. The telegraph of, of when the second one is that they're currently not fighting. He's going to jump out of the water back onto the platform. They pulled off a SWAT boss without feeling overly delayed or laborious. And that's hard to do. I think 14 does that pretty well overall. Thinking about the end yeah. of the Hamlet Dark when you fight the twins. Yeah, true, true. Because they, 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 that's just like full on anime. They're just flipping and zooming, dashing into there. And that's where I think the, the dance kind of mechanics of Final Fantasy really show themselves. When a boss disappears from the battlefield and starts doing effects, you're not like, oh, this is the worst part. It's really fun. It's fun doing the dances. Uh, love the model for the Marquise Morble. Just the, the stacks, just the mess of maws. Final Fantasy is very good at reusing its models. When they do, they add some nice twists on it, but we've seen this thing a lot recently. This is the old Void Arc. Uh, barfing Queen. We see the Barfing Queen a lot, and in fact, it showed up in uh, Don Meg. Barfing all over. This is my favorite reskin, for sure. Okay. I okay. really like it. I like Venus Flytraps, and they just like stacked a bunch of them on top of each other. And then we get the Quetzalcoatl. La Habrea turns into a bird monster. It's a really weird part of the dungeon if you're paying attention for that sort of thing. If you are a Final Fantasy fan, this is a model from another game. But as someone who didn't recognize the model, I just kind of went, what, what just happened? What now? Why? Why? <laughs> I think it's a fun dance. And I love the, the it gets it gets a little sweaty at the end, which I, I like. It does. I like I yeah. like a final boss to feel a little like, ooh. Um, so this gets a little sweaty at the end. We died a couple times in this dungeon, which I like. I love dying in a dungeon. Doesn't happen a lot in Final Fantasy 14 on my first playthrough. So even though the Final Fantasy VIII reference was lost on me, although I did go, I did go digging because I wanted to know what game it was from. A really cute fun fact. Uh, apparently, this is the so Quetzalcoatl is actually from I believe uh, uh, Aztec. Like it's a it's they a like yeah yeah they like doing Aztec stuff. Um, but this is the first time it's been spelled correctly in a Final Fantasy game because there was a character limit in Final Fantasy VIII, so they dropped a few letters. <laughs> okay. Limitations working inside of them. Nice. Yeah, I thought that was uh, I thought that was pretty pretty adorable. So yeah, even though like I'm not the biggest fan of the Final Fantasy references because I'm like you. I start reading when they show me a monster. I start reading into it. Why is this here? What story are they trying to tell me? So here I go. Why is La Habrea turning into a bird person? Um, and it, it really just to me it just kind of seemed like they wanted to make a Final Fantasy eight reference, and I shouldn't think about it too hard. I think the dividing line is when it's still cool in this game and this thing. It's not my particular brand of cool. It's kind of smooth penguin bird kind of shape. It looks like a, a, a Pokemon from a Pokemon I didn't play because I'm I've only played first gen. Yes, yes. Who has, hasn't evolved yet to get its humanoid legs and get weird like that? But yeah, it's it's very much got that. We're running out of Pokemon feel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I really to me this is like my like my own personal little darling. Like, uh, I really, really love Academia, but I don't think it beats out Mount Golg. I agree. I think there's a nice home for it right below Mount Golg. Wow. Are we getting out of this without any fights? Do we really? Yeah, I guess. So. Wow. This has been our yeah, most agree agreeable wall to date. Yeah, what the hell? What the hell? Do better, oh. Don Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Don Meg isn't a bad dungeon. It's just among giants. You storm blooded it there, didn't you? Uh, 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 I'm going to bat for storm blood, man. No, I, I know you. Yeah, yeah. Storm blood's so much better than people give it credit. I think this is where we're leaving our shadow bringers wall for now. I agree. I agree. I'm excited to see what squeezes in here. What uh, what moves what around? Sure as shit ain't gonna be that 5.1 dungeon. I'll tell you that right now. i <laughs> I know you already have a lame for that one. Surely. You know what? There's the fight. The fight's coming next time. 